Good afternoon, dear participants from the Western Balkan region, honorary speakers in the room and online, dear guests and colleagues. I'm Ina Rolovic from Center for Democracy Foundation, and it is my great pleasure to be the moderator at the opening of the Politea School for Youth Participation. Politea School exists since 1997, and it has so far educated over 1,800 people. This year, Politea is organized as part of the Regional Youth Dialogue for Europe project, supported by the European Union. The project is being implemented by the Regional Consortium of Seven Civil Society Organizations, with Center for Democracy Foundation being the project coordinator. As the very name of the project suggests, the Regional Youth Dialogue for Europe project has young people in focus and aims to further encourage young individuals and civil society organizations to take a more active role in decision-making processes related to youth issues. At this moment, we would like to share with you a few messages from Politea alumni on their experiences and thoughts about Politea. Hello everyone. First of all, uh, regards from Belgrade. My name is Andrea Trajković and I am Politea alumni since 2021, when Politea was held uh, in a new digital format with the participation of 30 uh, young experts from the region. Uh, it was uh, a great honor for me to participate in a school that has been organized for more than two decades with a large number of uh, prominent lecturers, uh, experts and uh, decision makers, representatives of academy. Uh, I can say proudly uh, that Polite is one of the most important and highest quality uh, youth educational interactive program on EU integration, regional cooperation, democracy and of course rule of uh, law in the Western Balkans. I wish you much uh, success in your work uh, at this year Politea School and I am sure that uh, you will long remember the memories you will make uh, during your stay in uh, Niche. Bye! Hi everybody, I would like to tell you something about Politea. Politea is not just ordinary school for good students created to improve their knowledge. Politea is placed in my memories as a custom made place for learning, networking, providing skills for social and political activities and uh, for the finding friends that could think the same way. I remember that 26 years ago we spent nice time and a beautiful time together. Today we still know each other and meet regularly. This is a core value of Politea. I hope you will enjoy as we enjoyed 26 years ago. My name is Andrea Lazarevic and I'm one of the alumni of Politea uh, Summer School. I would like to share my excitement about this school since you will be able to learn more about European integration, about regional cooperation, about uh, different projects that are, that are available for uh, you. Uh, in the Western Balkan states, but also you will be able to gain uh, different practical skills that will uh, enable you uh, to participate in different policy uh, writings and policy recommendations. Hello everyone, I'm Giorgio Tsujovic and I was Politea participant in 2019. For me, Politea was one of the first events which sparked my interest in regional cooperation and which provided me with some knowledge and skills which I would use afterwards in my professional career dealing with reconciliation and peace building in the Western Balkans. If I would choose one association for Politea program, it would be youth empowerment and youth cooperation in the Western Balkans. Hi, I'm Ismina Moric. I attended Politea 25 years ago. Today, I can tell you, take this opportunity to develop your skills, gain new perspectives, and develop strong connections with other participants from the region. Good luck. And we're back. We thank Politea alumni for their messages and hope that the group, somebody from your group of 24 participants will be the ones to share new messages to our future Politea generations. 
At this point, I am honored to introduce Ms. Plamena Halačeva, Deputy Head of Delegation of the European Union in Serbia, to address us as a guest speaker, but in a way as a co-host, given that the European Union supports this project. Ms. Halačeva, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Well, good afternoon to all. First of all, of course, Minister Miščević, dear Natasha, dear colleagues, uh, youth, ladies and, uh, and uh, gentlemen. I'm very happy to be with you, although virtually, and I very much hope that next time we can, we can do this in, uh, in person. Um, I, I believe it was, it was Franklin Roosevelt who said that we cannot always build the future that we want for our youth, but we can build our youth for, for the future. And I think that this event is uh, exactly the good way uh, uh, to go about it. Um, so I'm very happy to welcome you, uh, the youth participants on behalf of the European Union to this uh, very exciting uh, initiative. I'm uh, very proud that Politea School uh, for Youth Participation is organized in the context of the youth support at uh, Dialogue for Europe project, which is worth 1.1 million euros. Uh, as you know, this uh, project gathers various organizations from the region which work to improve the position of youth and also to empower um, youth organizations. Um, this is something which is uh, very high on the, on the EU agenda. Uh, also building on the results of uh, last year, the European Year of Youth, and uh, this year we're marking the European uh, Year of, of Skills. Um, as we step our investment in youth and uh, in their skills to face current but also upcoming challenges. Um, we also have the EU Youth Strategy, which encourages uh, social and civic engagement uh, by youth and, uh, of course, their active participation in, in, uh, in democratic life. Um, the main mechanism, as you may know, of, of the EU youth participation in the decision-making process is the so-called youth dialogue, which is taking place at several um, uh, levels, local, national, subnational, uh, as we seek to harness uh, youth opinions and, uh, and, and ideas. And uh, I know that we very often we, we hear that uh, everything is uh, very easy when you are young. Personally, I don't think this is uh, this is uh, this is the case. I think that the youth still faces numerous challenges, even if they're of different nature compared to uh, previous uh, generations. Uh, I also think that uh, expectations from the younger generations are much higher than they used to be. So, trying to to bridge this gap and to face um, uh, the challenges and empower the youth to meet the challenges uh, ahead, uh, we aim at providing more opportunities for for young people by mobilizing different policy instruments designed to increase the opportunities for youth participation, better reach out and um, more tailored measures, uh, more tailored support, uh, support uh, measures. Um, to reinforce the youth-oriented agenda, we're also supporting a number of regional initiatives, including programs such as the Erasmus Plus, which I believe is one of the most, most famous ones. Uh, of course, also the introduction of the Youth Guarantee in the Western Balkans region, uh, and building also on the conclusions of the Berlin process, we're supporting strong youth-oriented initiatives um, aimed at reconciliation, regional cooperation, uh, such as the programs of the Regional Youth Cooperation Office and, and projects like the one that uh, we are attending um, today. So I don't want to, tell, to take too long because this is, this is your event um, and I know that you have a very exciting uh, topics lined up, uh, including national and EU identities, various factors affecting the EU integration process, fundamental values, human rights, uh, the list goes on. So I invite you to, to take very active part and to, to make your voice heard. We want to hear from you, the youth from the region, uh, because this is, uh, this is about our future and the future of our continent and uh, the future of your choice. Thank you very much. For such a thorough insight, uh, into the issues and, and the state of youth in Serbia, but also for your words of support. Uh, I would like to now invite Ms. Natasha Vučković, 
a Secretary General of the Center for Democracy Foundation, to tell us a bit more about the history of Politea, but also the context of this year's Politea. Ms. Wutkowicz, please take the floor. Thank you, Nina. It is really a great pleasure to be here after two, three months of preparation, and it is uh, such a big excitement to see you all here. Thanks you for applying, and thanks thank you for coming here to share with us what we have prepared for you, and we hope you will like it. Let me tell you just uh, briefly about how the idea about Polita actually uh, um, uh, came about. It uh, emerged as an idea in early 1997, during large civic and students' protests in Serbia. And for the first 20 years, actually, it was organized in Serbia alone. The Center for Democracy Foundation was provoked in 1997 by new democratic energy, and it was incited to create a program which would contribute to the development of democratic potentials of young generations as future leaders of democratic reforms and leaders of the European integration. Um, at that time, in Serbia, young people were particular victims of the authoritarian regime and international isolation and were very much hurt in a specific manner by the conditions of living in the period 1990-2000. I think that all of us, the Western Balkans, were in a special way hurt by this in this period. Um, so they were all growing up in a society where the normal system of values was destroyed, while their surrounding was aggressive and overwhelmed with injustice, and where the lack of culture, honesty, and confidence became dominant. I think that we can all share some same similar experiences in our countries. School Politea was designed for students who wish to enlarge their knowledge about civil society, about tolerance, about how to peacefully res resolve the conflicts, about human rights, how, what are human rights, how do we protect them, what is actually democratic behavior and democratic culture, what, is about Europe what about European Union and why it is going to be so important for us in the Western Balkans in the years to come. What is actually social and economic transition and how to actively participate in public and civic activities? Those were the, the questions that led us to create uh, Politea in 1997. In 2019, actually, Politea became regional within a regional project that was led by 13, 14 even organizations from the Western Balkans. Uh, it was Regional Youth Compact for Europe where we actually work with a lot of young, le young leaders, young activists from the Western Balkans, uh, from, and, and Turkey was also included in that project as well. In 2021, Bitpolitea became digital due to COVID. In spite of all limitations, this offered also a lot of opportunities. That is, it is always the case. So at that moment, lectures from all over the world were actually invited and were able to join us online, but it was a very big uh, benefit for our uh, participants at that moment. Um, I must say that among the Politea alumni since 1998, as you could have seen from the short film that we and messages that uh, 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 Politea fellows actually sent to you, uh, in this group of Politea alumni, there are many successful and recognized men and women uh, in academia, in research, in politics, in business, in civil society, in international organizations, in many of our parliaments, many of our ministers also. And we were happy to be able to have excellent lecturers who, apart from the great knowledge and experience, brought also their values and created a value community uh, with, uh, with the participants. Among them were our dear late Professor Mamcilo Gruber, Vesna Pusic, former Minister for Foreign uh, Relations from Croatia, Professor Andreas Gross, who is a, a prominent member of Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, Professor Mitunovic, Ivan Vejvoda, Gordon Djurovic, who was a uh, Deputy Prime Minister of Montenegro and many others. And here we are today with a new group of students coming from all parts of the Western Balkans. We're happy to welcome you. For us, every new course of Politea brings a lot of excitement and challenges. We do our utmost to adapt the curriculum every time to the present needs, the present needs of the young people, of the young generations, and also to the reality that we now live in, 
and which imposes a lot of questions and requires a lot of answers. This year, we focus particularly on how to reinvigorate the reform process in the Western Balkans, on how to tackle fake news, on how to promote socioeconomic benefits that the EU integration brings to our citizens in the region. How do we make public policies and how can we encourage citizens and particularly young people for greater participation in the policy making? Those are some of the questions that we are going to work upon in the days in front of us. And there is a big novelty this year. In the second half of the course, we always used to work with our students on small projects that they would design. But the novelty this year is that there will be some funding for these projects. And we are happy to announce that actually the best ideas that you are going to, to work uh, on in the, in the days come are going to be uh, in the in the in the in the pot from which we were actually going to to um, to 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 select the best ideas and the best small projects, and we will be working on them regionally together uh, in the forthcoming period. Uh, I would like to quote some uh, professors, some lecturers from former courses that we always demand them to evaluate the course, to evaluate how they actually communicated with the participants, what they thought about uh, the curriculum and so on. And I would quote two because I like them the most. And this is uh, Professor Hernitsa said, I was impressed how easily a dialogue was established among the participants and the lecturers and trainers. Even more impressed I was with the simplicity with which young people overcame came the differences and the barriers that existed among them. And the second one, Professor Colin, is to say, Polite encourages participants to use the model of civic behavior that reduces psychological, social, and economic barriers and forge social cohesion, democracy, and social welfare. Finally, I would like to make some uh, uh, thanks notes to all those that enabled that we meet today. Uh, the first uh, thanks go to the team of lecturers, trainers, guest speakers that accepted their invitation to join us by working on uh, this year's curriculum and to share their knowledge with this generation of Polytech students. I would also like to thank the partners of the project Regional Youth Dialogue for Europe from Albania, North Macedonia, Kosovo, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Serbia, who uh, uh, really committed themselves to, uh, to, to, to undertake good interviews with all the candidates, and which actually recommended and made the selection of, of this group of students this year. I would like also to help the colleagues from Regional Cooperation Council, uh, uh, Regional Youth Cooperation Office and all other organizations with which we share shared experience and some of them you're going to see today at this opening and tomorrow at the panel discussion and so on. Finally, I would like to uh, say a lot of thanks to the uh, team of the Center for Democracy Foundation, Mina, Diana, Milena, Ivan, Janka, who committed themselves uh, and uh, with all their hearts and energy to make this course happen. The last, but far from the last, uh, our thanks go to the European Union that decided to support us again in our efforts to bring our young people together, encourage them to work together and make impact on policies that are important for young people in the Western Balkans. I wish you all to spend nice time at Politea, to learn and to exchange, to debate and to reflect, to play and to design, to teach us, finally, how to further improve the next Politea courses. We hope that you will be empowered to take active part in programs for youth on national, regional, and European level, and that you will be empowered also and encouraged to contribute to develop a better and more prosperous Western Balkans. That is our common goal. Thank you again for being with us in this week. Thank you, Ms. Woodcoach, for this valuable and also exciting input. We're looking forward to your continuous contribution to this year's Politea as well. At this point, I most cordially welcome Ms. Tanya Mitrovic, Minister of EU Integration in the Government of the Republic of Serbia. She is here with us today. Madam Minister, the floor is yours. 
it is my pleasure to be here with you. So good afternoon. I hope that you will enjoy being in Serbia, being in Niche. Niche is um, second or third, I'm not sure. They, they always quarrel with uh, the other town in Serbia, which is the bigger. Uh, but nevertheless, one of uh, bigger towns in Serbia, but very cordial, and I'm sure that you are going to enjoy. Um, first and foremost, uh, um, um, I would like also to say uh, thank to Plamena and the delegation of European Union. The Plamena had to leave. Uh, that is... Uh, um, that, that, that is something that we are faced with, but also to say hi after some time to Ognjen and to George that we used to work together at the same uh, uh, topic of the regional cooperation. So I know uh, I see Alexandra here, but also other parts of the panel that you are going to have tomorrow dealing with the enlargement policy. <clears throat> So, um, uh, preparing for this panel, uh, I would like to discuss a little bit around the three topics. I know that I see among you some of those who got a very good marks on my exam only recently. They could help. Um, uh, so, that means there are some of my students here. Um, uh, of course, that you did not know. <laughs> Um, uh, I would like to start with something which I think is extremely important. Uh, for me, definitions are very important. Let's start with uh, some of those uh, issues that you, you heard from both Plamena, but also from Natasha. Uh, and uh, uh, those issues are Western Balkans, regional cooperation, Berlin process. Are we all clear? what we are talking about. Do we know all the definitions? Yeah, so let's start with the Western Balkans. Are we coming from the Western Balkans? Politically, yes, but we are coming from the Balkans. Okay, so why Western Balkans? Huh? But why Western Balkans? You think that the Western Balkans comes from the Western values. Yeah. Why then they did not introduce Western, Central, Eastern Europe? If it is the issue of the values. <laughs> huh? Why Western Balkans? Please, jump in. Okay. East. Okay, East Block. Okay, and the East Block after the second after the Cold War start to negotiate membership with the European Union. Yes. And the leftovers, if I may uh, call us leftovers, that means those who were not part of the Warsaw Pact, Eastern Bloc, we stood there not being covered with the European integration process. And we are talking about 90s. Huh? Okay. At the end of 90s, back in 97, 98, the European Union coined, discovered, uh, new top, uh, a new name, toponym, which was the Western Balkans. The Western Balkans consist of who? Who are huh? former Yugoslavia dissoluted, including Slovenia or not? No, because Slovenia was already in the integration process from the beginning of the 90s. But Croatia? became member the, when they became member of the european okay so but former yugoslavia and who else 
Albania. Exactly. We call it Western Balkan, Western Balkan 6. Uh, now is the topic that is uh, usually used. Okay, this is the first point. The second one, regional integration or regional cooperation. Is this a criteria condition or something that we see it's important? How do we understand regional cooperation? <laughs> Exactly. So the criteria and condition. It used to be like this from the very beginning, as as you said, it not it was not the topic for the previous enlargement waves, including Central Eastern European countries. But how do you see that as a criteria or necessity? Is regional cooperation something that somebody else has to ask us to establish, or we need that for our sake? Please. Exactly. So the we can start off with cooperation. Mm -hmm. This this show it show Okay, so cooperation is actually what we learn, it helped the process of European integration. But cooperation is in the best interest of those who cooperate. Especially if we now have the common goal. Here in Serbia is European integration process. In others in the Western Balkans is Euro-Atlantic. You know that Serbia has the parliamentary decision not to join NATO or any other military uh, alliance. This is our own. But nevertheless, it does not hurt any type of integration process with the European Union. We also establish a good relationship with NATO uh, in terms of the partnership for peace, like others from the uh, from the region. So we sorted out the two most important definitions. So the Western Balkans, regional integration, or better, regional cooperation as an element of integration process with the European uh, European Union. Where are we in the integration process? Well, we started almost all together. It was the beginning of this century. So that means 20 something years ago. Uh, and uh, you will discuss tomorrow, is this a long process? Is this something which was needed uh, to take so many years to reach the level? But I would like to point out uh, the other way around for me, um, maybe I am the optimist, but for me, the glass is always half full, not half empty. So let's try to find out how uh, this half full glass is. So if you compare your own societies, you will see that there are huge differences from the beginning of the century. We are still not very happy about the outcome and the result. We are still not there to fulfill the criteria and the condition, but we moved very 
uh, uh, n- not swiftly, but very far away where we were at the beginning of the process. Take, for example, the most important criteria for country, for society, because this is not only for the institutions, to become member of the European Union. What is the most important element in the integration process? The rule of law. You are coming from where? Okay. Ah, okay. So, rule of law means what? What are the elements of the rule of law? What covers the rule of law? Reform of what? What judiciary? Reform of judiciary. We have the reforms of judiciary in North Macedonia, in Albania, in Serbia, partially Bosnia and Herzegovina. Oh, Montenegro, sorry. Montenegro also with the constitutional reforms. So that means that we are not at the very beginning, that we are now tuning up our judiciary. What is the second extremely important element? The whole of the Western Balkan is the area where EU see a lot of problem with one particular activity. Fight against corruption. Fight against corruption is one of the extremely important elements that connected with the reform of judiciary, but also with uh, providing the criteria, for providing the situation for uh, inviting the uh, investments to come. You know that the investors will not come if they are not secure. And if somebody is asking them to pay additionally for something which they legally can get. What is the third part of the reform uh, of the rule of law? Protection of our own rights. Human, fundamental rights, but also rights of minorities, national minorities, LGBTQ, I plus, whatever. Uh, That type of protection is is also needed. We, as a traditional societies, and we are all traditional society, we are now at the level that some of us from the region, they have laws on same-sex marriages. 20 years ago, that was not, in, not possible even to discuss about uh, that issue. And the extremely important part of the rule of law is, of course, the element of the security. That's the other coin, the other part of the coin, that means the functioning of the police, visa, asylum, migration, extremely important uh, element, which is now one of the topics for all of our societies to deal with. Illegal, legal migration, change Europe, but also all of them are coming to Europe through our territories through the territories of the Western Balkans. So that means that we also have to deal uh, uh, deal with the issue. On the other side, our societies are getting old and we need additional workforce. So migrations are also the capacity, the possibilities for our development, but we have to be extremely careful uh, in this respect. Of course, that the rule of law is not the only criteria and condition. There are a lot of other criteria, reforms in each and every of the area. From the issue of environmental protection, climate change. That's also uh, one of the big criteria. Then energy diversification and working on the energy security uh, as such, as, as such to the issues which are connected with our own development, industrial development, public procurement, intellectual property rights. So there are so many criteria and conditions which are organized in how many chapters? No, no, those are the clusters, six. But the whole, uh, what we are negotiating about, when 
we are going to be able to fully implement EU law. And how do we know what is the EU law? Because it is organized in 35 negotiating chapters. The new methodology has organized that additionally into clusters. But this is a different, this is a different, uh, uh, this is a different topic. So where we are in terms of the accession, the or enlargement enlargement policy. Um, the word that you are going to hear, I'm just uh, returning from Brussels. So the word that you are hearing right now is the momentum for enlargement. How come that only now the momentum after 20 something years has reappeared? Why? What happened that the EU is now less reluctant to talk about the enlargement. Why Ukrainian war opened that issue? Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. In other words, when we are together, we are much stronger than if parts of the region are not connected inside. We will see. Is it before, yeah. at the same time? But what, regardless of this momentum, the, for sure you are going to discuss, regardless of the political momentum, we have to fulfill our still conditions. So do not forget about the conditions. Why I am putting the emphasis on this? From opinion, for sure, you are going to hear about the creation of the public policies. The creation of the public policies is actually the, uh, the endeavor or the exercise for all of us, including young people, including youth. Creation of the policies are in accordance with the EU standards. So those are the reforms. And that is what you, as somebody who is following Politea, will at some point for sure have the possibility to deal with. That is the, the, most important, the most important thing in the integration process. The reforms through the uh, changing the public policies of our own, not the policies that are in the European Union. That will come at some point, once when we become member of the, uh, of the, European, uh, of the European Union. Last but not least, and uh, to give the, the uh, space for uh, colleagues to go to Georgia and a little bit more, is the Berlin process. So, the Berlin process was created back in 2014. Uh, you are very young to remember all this, but we do. That was the idea to start with the connectivity. So the connectivity of the region for the region. Uh, it started with the idea of connectivity in terms of the pure connectivity to build the roads, to build the railways. But we are now talking about much important thing of this type of co co uh, connectivity. So that means that we exchange our knowledge, experience, ideas in order to boost development for the region. 
um, uh, uh, Berlin process is now regaining the powers. The idea of the uh, Berlin process is, of course, to create the common regional market. I'm sure that you heard about that. But the best example of creating this interconnectivity is roaming as at home. You heard about that. So that means that you are coming from all around the region, but still you are not going to pay roaming here while you are uh, using your own phone from your countries, from your uh, towns, uh, because there is no roaming fee. That is the uh, type of connectivity, uh, the pure connectivity that we can uh, that we can have. Now we are discussing of even further. What are the next areas? What are the uh, possibilities for us to uh, uh, to develop a re regional integration even more? And I will be in the newest idea, and that uh, is actually about that. The newest idea was pronounced only a month ago by the president of the European Commission when she said that actually for the Western Balkans, there is a possibility of using more the single market. That means that we are now uh, getting the possibility to become part of the even more of the single market with the four freedoms, you know the story, even before becoming member of the European Union. Why? To use uh, not only more money, but also programs like Erasmus+, Plus, like Horizon, to have joint research teams, to participate more in the, eco in the uh, research area, to boost the development of our own societies in order to speed up the integration process. For this, we first need to uh, work much more, much better in the, uh, in the region. Of course, that's not without the problems. The region is not still without any problems. I'm sure that you are going to discuss this, but the problems are there to be solved by the dialogue, by discussing, and that it starts here. So um, I promise that I will finish. So I am finishing. Please use this opportunity to learn, to debate, to discuss. To even go into tough issues where you know that you are going to disagree, but to discuss that, to try to find the arguments which are better suited than the argument of the other side and fight around arguments, not fight by beating each other. That's not the solution. Only discussion will lead to the regional integration and cooperation, and it will lead us to towards the European integration process. So thank you very much uh, for letting me this opportunity. Thank you. I am grateful for very esteemed Center for Democracy Foundation. Thank you, Mila. Thank you, Natasha, very much for inviting me here. It was my pleasure to be here. Of course, I'm still here if any question might occur. Thank you. And Professor Mistovic. Yes. <laughs> And uh, not only for your information and ideas, but also for giving our participants the glimpse of what is upcoming in the next couple of days of how in interactive and energetic our uh, topics and sessions are going to, to be. And you already laid the floor for our next speaker, and that is Ognjen Markovic, team leader of Western Balkans Youth Labs, implemented by the Regional Cooperation Council, also known as RCC. Mr. Markovic will share his experience from implementing a highly successful project aimed to provide opportunities for youth to participate in decision-making processes. Ognjen, the floor is yours. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for the invitation and it is a great pleasure of mine to join you virtually for the opening of the Politea School. Um, I am very happy to, to share the floor with such a great panelists and uh, really this is one of the great opportunities for young people from the region to learn more about regional cooperation, EU accession processes and similar. Um, thanks to uh, Minister Ms. Miščević who is 
Uh, I believe both academically and diplomatically always has been a great supporter of young people from the region. Now you had a chance to uh, understand the context where we where we work when it comes to youth cooperation uh, in the Western Balkans um, and therefore I'm happy to present you just some some uh, glimpse of our work when it comes to the Western Balkans youth lab. So basically it is a regional uh, project covering the Western Balkans uh, aiming to support young people to participate in decision-making processes, meaning to involve young people um, in uh, creation of public policies that again, um, Ms. Minister mentioned. So basically this is very uh, ambitious project having in mind that somehow we in the region are not very well famil familiar with the, with the values but also with the uh, principles of co-management and co-implementation for both young people and policy makers but thanks to the great methodology that we developed together with European Youth Forum and I believe that some of you are already familiar with, with that. We somehow translated that uh, best EU practice to the context of the Western Balkans. Uh, but why we do all of this work is uh, actually the fact that 93% of young people from the region believe that public administration should involve young people in decision-making processes, but also 88% uh, of young people believe that regional cooperation would be improved if opinions of young people are being taken into consideration. So somehow relying fully on the uh, evidence-based uh, data, we tried to, to build this, this regional uh, approach and actually to uh, create policies together with young people on the topic of youth unemployment and youth mental health. So everything we do is actually based on the needs and opinions of young people. So having in mind that I don't have much time, I will not go into detail, but, but rather giving you some wider perspective. Why these two topics? Uh, well, because 35% uh, is the youth unemployment rate in the region, which is double as high compared to the EU level. Uh, which of course later on affects mental health and well-being of young people and somehow both uh, topics have been chosen by the youth by the youth from from the western balkans the youth lab is actually a, a, a methodology that lasts for one year and a half uh, and in that period we are working closely with the policy makers and young people who are very well equipped with the knowledge on, on these specific topics in order to have a joint result. Joint result is a policy that has been drafted or even uh, adopted by respective governments. So uh, now after more than three and a half years of the project implementation, I'm happy to share with you that we supported creation of the National Youth Strategy on Mental Health in North Macedonia for the following four years. We created uh, amendments on law on youth, on law on youth and employment in Montenegro. We supported preparation of amendments on law on youth in Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, we supported work on the youth guarantee, which is very important for, for, uh, for the region uh, in Serbia, but also, but also Montenegro. And of course, uh, having in mind this regional uh, approach and the uh, two topics were, that were going in parallel in the in previous um, uh, time, we also supported the youth component of the um, national youth strategy for mental health in, in Albania, as well as roadmap on transition from education to labor market uh, in Albania, which later on became part also of the first ever national youth strategy um, um, of this economy. So, somehow, even though the approach was totally new to the region, as you could hear, we really have some great results uh, behind us. And this is, I believe, really uh, mostly thanks to gr great young people that we managed to involve in the process, who are always uh, representatives of the National Youth Councils, because we all know that they are the most re youth representative bodies in the region. So since you are in Niche, also with the great so, cooperation with the National Youth Council of Serbia, COMS, uh, we also created the great campaigns on youth mental health and youth guarantee in previous, um, in previous uh, months. And this is really showing that young people can be creator of creators of the change that we need to see in the region. 
And uh, I'm very happy to see that most of even consultants that we hired throughout the entire process, uh, the young ones showed a great responsibility, innovation and results that are actually youth driven so that we can fully have this uh, youth approach in, in the entire process. Besides this, and, uh, again, uh, fully relying on what has been said by, by Ms. Minister, we are also supporting participation of young people at high level conferences at EU level because we want to ensure that voices of youth from the region are being heard, nothing else. And uh, we have to really uh, start from this uh, basic and first uh, um, steps in order to have long lasting cooperation also with our partners from, from the EU. Uh, but uh, somehow what, what comes the most important, and I will finish with this, is that regional cooperation is really key uh, to success when it comes to youth cooperation, because what we can see among young people um, is that they are uh, becoming uh, great friends, partners in different projects, and that there are two borders when it comes um, when it comes to specific youth cooperation. And further to this, uh, we as young people should not be satisfied with business as usual, but we should always trigger and seek for new solutions in order to really constructively uh, contribute to discussions and to ensure that uh, we are not just being consulted, but rather uh, uh, fully participated in, in all uh, processes that are that are regarding uh, decision making. And finally, uh, as I somehow started with data, uh, I can I will conclude by saying that 85% of youth from the of youth from the region believe that regional initiatives such as the right project, I can freely say, as well as the work of RIPO and uh, RCC, of course, uh, on youth cooperation make young people feel optimistic about the future. And having in mind what uh, politically what is happening in the region, but also outside of the region, but somehow affecting our well-being, um, it really uh, makes us happy to know that young people think that regional cooperation is one of the keys for the success. So I really hope that you participants will enjoy the Polita School. Having in mind, a lot of my friends are the alumni of this of this great um, initiative, and uh, that you will take the advantage of being there to to learn to learn as much as possible, and of course have fun. So thank you and uh, good luck. Thank you for this overview of the work you have conducted and the policy paper design throughout the region. Uh, I will pick up on your message, so to say that the regional cooperation of, of young people is easy and use it to announce the next speaker, who is a local program officer in Belgrade branch of the Regional Youth Cooperation Office, also known as RAICO. But he's also a Polite alumni. You've seen him in the video. And uh, now I invite Giorgio Cvijevic to address us from where, Georgia, Macedonia, North Macedonia, Mavrovo. Yes, uh, hello everyone from Mavrovo, North Macedonia. We are actually currently implementing similar program as Politea, and uh, I'm really happy actually to spare one hour of my time to be here with another generation since, as you already said, I am an alumni and actually the pioneer of the regional program of Politea since I learned just recently that in, that in 2019, Politea had uh, its premiere on the regional level and I was the 2019 generation. So, so I was, I'm really glad for that. Also, I want to thank Professor Mishevich uh, for setting the floor and explaining quite nicely uh, everything which is important about Berlin process and uh, regional cooperation. And it's quite easier for me now just to say that Regional Youth Cooperation Office was established in 2016 within the Berlin process with the aim to uh, bring regional cooperation and reconciliation closer to young people in the region and to connect young people in the region since also as Professor Mishevich said, connectivity was one of the main goals of launching the Berlin process. In 2016, it was somehow noticed that even though uh, the years after uh, violent conflicts passed, young people in the region are still 
uh, full with stereotypes and prejudice, but also have this intergenerational trauma, which was passed uh, through the parents and through the, uh, from the generation which was participating in armed conflicts and actually was affected primarily by them, two young people, and that young people still don't have enough opportunities and chances to meet and discuss important uh, topics and issues on the regional level. We all had opportunities through Erasmus Plus to travel to the EU countries and some regional countries. And we all met somewhere in Berlin or in Vienna or somewhere in France and discussed regional issues and also formed uh, some connections with young people from the region somewhere abroad, but similar opportunities unfortunately were limited before. And um, this was a chance actually to kind of institutionalize also the support from the governments to regional cooperation of young people. And we are really happy that we are celebrating seventh birthday. We just celebrated it, I think, three days ago. We had the seventh birthday and we have some quite nice results behind us. 31,000 young people went through RICOS programs for seven years. Seven million euros were invested in uh, youth exchanges in the Western Balkans. We do youth exchanges through cooperation with civil society, but also with high schools, which is another unique thing for Regional Youth Cooperation Office, because we realize that high schools also give us wider reach among young people and that we are not limited to usual suspects, as we usually call them, uh, people who are already involved through civil society, who know about opportunities, who know where to find similar opportunities, but schools give us this opportunity to actually go even lower to the local level and actually involve young people who didn't have even the opportunity to travel outside their own countries and visit some, play, some other place in the Western Balkans. Also, in, as it was mentioned, uh, and as I mentioned, I'm really glad to welcome you as alumni of Politea. I need to agree with uh, Ms. Vučković that the program is quite updated and uh, quite, quite upgraded, not to be disrespectful, disrespectful towards my opportunity, but I went through the program uh, of this year, uh, this year's Politea, and I can say that really besides the topics which are quite important for me and for RICO, where I currently work, I can see that you will really learn a lot from really prominent experts and that you will topic some, uh, tackle some really important topic. Uh, for me, most important, and I'm really glad that those topics are involved in the program, the topics of identity. I'm, I hope that you will have the chance to discuss whether the identity is something which is fixed and set in the stone and uh, uh, something which you uh, receive by some of your traits, such as nationality or religion, or is it something that is more flexible and fluid so that you can maybe perceive and view European and national identity as something which is uh, complementary and not opposite of each other. Also the topics of stereotypes and prejudice, which are quite important in our work and unfortunately uh, give us a challenge in our work on a daily basis. From our experience, unfortunately in the region, we'll, we still face situations where young people are um, either scared or reluctant to even enter into places of worship of another religion or another religious objects, which are still making jokes, which are offensive towards uh, members of different ethnicities or religions or nationalities. So this is something which is quite common, unfortunately, also among young people, which is passed by this toxic uh, media narrative as well. I, I saw that this will also be one of the topic of your discussion. So I really wish you um, really, really fruitful discussions. And also, I think this is a chance to uh, present your society and culture in the best possible way and to prove actually all the headlines and all the, uh, how to say, usual narrative wrong. Uh, without further ado, I will finish with this. And as I said, good luck and wish you all the best with the rest of the program. Yeah, uh, first of all, we wish you many, many more successful years in your work. 
Uh, you also tackled many of the issues. You introduced some of the issues that we're about to discuss in our in our weekly uh, school. One of them being the issue of participation at the local level. That gives me a perfect opportunity to invite Ms. Antonella Valmorvida, Secretary General of the European Association for Local Democracy, known as ALDA. ALDA is the alliance of local and regional authorities and civil societies that works for sustainable and inclusive community for democracy and European values. ALDA works and will continue to work on connecting citizens of the EU and the Western Balkans. And for us, it is very important, and we're happy to say that ALDA has been a great partner in the previous three-year three -year project, also supported by the European Union. So, Ms. Valmorbida, please, the floor is yours. We are looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is my great pleasure indeed to be part in this uh, introductory session to and meet together with you and, and also the new participants to this year Qualitea School. I would like to congratulate all of you for such a long endeavor. Uh, and it's I know how difficult it is to to do that on regular on the regular basis and then to be updated and to keep on going and uh, really congratulations we are also very happy to be here today because you have uh, in the room uh, uh, Natasha Vučković Natasha and the Center for Democracy and Foundation uh, are member of ALDA and Natasha has just been appointed and elected our vice president so we feel uh, in very good company as you mentioned, ALDA is working on uh, local democracy and citizens' participation, especially at the local level. Uh, and the title of our General Assembly uh, this year was Local Democracy Will Save Democracy. And uh, we see a big potential for also all the participants which, uh, who are now in the room today to be involved in their local communities and to be part uh, of their local context. And uh, we, we are underlining about the fact that democracy starts there around us, uh, in our council, in our commitment at the local level, both in big cities, but also in small ones. And we learn how to do democracy and we learn uh, the added value of deliberation and exchanges and mediation and respect of change uh, of power also around us in our own local context. As you said, ALDA is a partner of the Politea School. Uh, we did uh, together, but also with other stakeholders, uh, a big program on youth policies for many years. Uh, you quoted the last one, but we had more, and we know how it is important, to, especially in the region of Western Balkans, to, to work on youth dimension. Uh, and youth place in the policy making, uh, uh, both at the local and national level. ALTA is very happy to be together with you today because we are celebrating 30 years of activities in the region. Uh, we opened uh, the Local Democracy Agency, which is mainly the instrument we use to be active in, uh, in the region, but not only, of course. We opened the first Local Democracy Agency in Subotica in 1993. And I'm afraid to say that I was already around, <laughs> like some of you. Um, we then also further on, I think in 1999 or 2000, open. Um, actually, it was uh, 2000 and 2001, the local democracy agency in Niš uh, for Central and Southern Serbia, where you are. Uh, and we moved the office uh, and our uh, Southern Serbia activities to Knjaževac uh, recently. Uh, we still have many local democracy agencies operational in the region. We have three of them in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Most are uh, Davidovici and Triodor, and we have, uh, as I said, uh, an office in Subotica and in, uh, in Knjaževac. We work also 
uh, in Albania with our members, in Montenegro with our members and our LDAs, and we have a regional office in uh, Skopje, Northern Macedonia. We also have many other members, local authorities and civil society groups. So uh, I think that uh, we are here to also mention that ALDA uh, has been there for many years now, uh, but we also, and Natasha knows that, uh, uh, approved a rainfall strategy uh, in the Balkans last year, because we know the challenges which are ahead of us. Uh, we know that uh, we, we need to reinforce our presence in the region. We know that we need to invest uh, with relationship and with projects in this region, which is so important for all of us and for us as European as a whole. We were there when there was the Thessaloniki meeting in 2003 and when we said the war is over and we need now to talk about the Balkans uh, in Europe and we contributed to pave the way to the enlargement in this region. Uh, I want to say also that ALDA is contributing to these initiatives with uh, decentralized cooperation. Most of our activities are based on commitment from European partners for the local democracy agencies, but also for all our projects. So I, I always say that ALDA really brought uh, a lot of attention, but also a lot of partners in the region. Uh, I want to say again that uh, it's great that you work on building capacities and awareness of young citizens uh, of the region together. For us as well, the regional approach is, uh, is key. Uh, we think that the regional approach is, is and is going to be uh, fundamental for the enlargement of the European Union, but mainly for uh, democratization, stabilization, and growth in the region. Uh, we know uh, that our partners, uh, both local authorities and civil society, are in great demand of regional approach. Uh, we think that um, despite uh, a very difficult intergovernmental relationship in the region, there is uh, room for cooperation there is room for really intense exchanges and our partners, friends and colleagues are asking for this. So um, uh, we are really looking forward to engage also with this new business of the school. I wish you, I saw the program. I wish I could be there with you and spend a few, few days to know more with your fantastic uh, uh, tutors uh, and, and those who are going to uh, accompany you in this uh, in these days uh, at the school and I'm sure that you will get inspired uh, you will learn more from the region and from Europe uh, and be stakeholders as many of you we heard uh, for for the future step uh, I bring the Balkans in my heart uh, Natasha knows that uh, in, in the in the good uh, and in the and in the difficult ways, uh, I spend a lot of my time in this region. I spent four years in Sizak, Croatia, since 1996 to 2000. It seems to be like ages ago, uh, and this is actually so. But I think definitely that that uh, I mean you can count on us uh, for for projects, for, for policies, and for reflecting together about the future of this region, which is the future of Europe. Thank you very much for your invitation to take the floor. It's really encouraging to hear how uh, that we share the same idea and that also there is someone, the European Association, interested in all the local communities uh, in the Western Balkan region. And now I give the floor to Vice President of ALDA. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Antonella. I would like to thank again uh, Plamina Hrachova. Thank you very much for your kind address. Thank you very much, Professor, Minister Mishchevic, dear friend Tanya, uh, Ognjen, Giorgio, and of course Antonella. Uh, I would uh, also like to thank you for the interactive approach that you actually introduce and say a few words, just a few words about the methodology and make some further introductions. Um, 
we are very proud of the methodology that we designed and developed within the Politea. It is not only interactive, but it is participant-centered approach, meaning that we want to build on your existing knowledge, on your existing experience, and then to create something that is the value of the, of the group as a whole. So meaning this, we have two major uh, way of work, if you wish. One is plenary like this. In plenary, you will hear lectures, you will meet with uh, guest speakers, with lectures, with presenters. Uh, we will have panel discussion in plenary. But then uh, we will have workshops. We will work in groups. We will actually, we will be divided in two groups and you will have two facilitators that will be working with you. I don't know how the groups will be formed. I will give the floor to our uh, key trainers, Milo Zajic and Igor Jorkic, who will actually introduce themselves and then say how you will work from now on because they're going to be your your, uh, um, how to say, main point of contact in the next uh, uh, couple of days. And uh, so I hope that, uh, I don't know whether you would like to introduce yourself now and then uh, just say how we're going to continue afterwards. Yeah, well, I'm going to be your trainer together with Milos. I'm going to be your trainer in the next, uh, I would say, seven days. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of uh, things to discuss, a lot of hours, lectures, to some workshops that we prepared as a national set, a good combination of uh, different approaches in order to try to keep your attention on high level. But at the same time, uh, at the same time, we need to tackle the so important things uh, that we have uh, been there on the past. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to give us to introduce himself and then we give you just a couple of information how we will continue this after a short break. Okay, I'm Milos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also from Belgrade. Center of Modern Health. We are working together for a long time. Uh, I'm trainer for the state and I hope we will work together in the seven days. Okay. okay. Okay, so I think it's a uh, it's a good moment maybe because they're debating the agenda. We are a little bit behind. Fifty minutes, fifty minutes away. So let's have a break and then we come back in this room and then we're gonna continue with uh, first of all getting to know each other, introducing with you with your agenda and the small games that we prepared for you. Dear speakers online, we thank you so much for being part of our introductory uh, panel, and we hope to we'll hear from you and see you more live than, than online very, very soon. Thank you. And bye. it will be very dynamic, intensive, bye and bye. engaging. So, we see one part.